Hey guys, so I'm going to attempt to narrate this video today, uh, this process video. I'm going to scrapbook this photo of my niece and nephew that my sister-in-law posted on Facebook. And I'm looking through the... What collection is that? I don't remember. Hmm. Which one is it? I think it's called On the Boardwalk. Um, it's, it's obviously Echo Park, and I'm not sure that I use any of it, actually, because it's not on my, eh. I pulled it out and went through it, but actually never used anything from that Echo Park collection, so I don't know what it's called, but you don't have to pay attention to it, because I don't use any of it, but I do use the Dear Lizzie Fifth and Frolic collection, and that piece of paper there with the popsicles on it is from you know if I would scrapbook and then narrate these videos in real time I might remember what the heck I did you know what I'm saying so that um, that paper there with the popsicles on it is from doodlebug design fruit stand it's called fruit pops and the kids in the photo they're eating popsicles so that worked out perfectly. So I'm going through the Dear Lizzie Fifth and Frolic collection to see what papers that I want to use. And I specifically bought that popsicle paper for this photo. So that worked out well. And again, just going through and I don't pre-plan. I just kind of, and I've been watching a lot of feedback on process videos. And a lot of people say, you know, we like it when people plan things out. So, you know, you don't watch a lot, um, people go through the stash and try to figure out what what's going on and things like that. But and then, you know, there's a whole other part, a whole other um, section of people who really enjoy watching the, you know, as you go through the papers and, and you figure out and make decisions. So you can't please everyone. You know what I'm saying? So I'm actually going to cut this photo in half. I wanted to scrapbook two photos and I'm going to cut this photo and use this Lawn Fawn stamp. And that is Lawn Fawn. Let me find it. Uh, say cheese that's the say cheese stamp set and I just had to find a block that was large enough and what I did initially before I I'm just testing the stamp there I haven't used the stamp in a long time so I just wanted to make sure it was gonna stamp okay I'm using memento ink and the color on that memento ink is London fog and I'm gonna cut the photo and then put each kid in one of those Polaroid frames that's the plan. So I'm going to use my, I'm going to use my X-Acto knife here, and it's actually a Stampin' Up um, knife. So uh, I bought it from Stampin' Up. I'm going to use that there to cut out these uh, Polaroids. And uh, you saw me look at a couple of different options for Polaroid frames at the beginning of this layout process because I just wanted to see which ones were going to fit with the pictures, uh, the one picture I had. It's one picture. I'm going to cut it in half and make it look like there's two pictures. So, but I wanted to see which, um, what size frame I needed to make sure that, you know, both the, the both things are in the photo, in, that are visible in the photo, both the kid's face, obviously, and the fact that they have a popsicle otherwise the title and the theme of the layout would make no sense whatsoever. So I'm cutting the inside of those frames out and then I'm going to line these frames up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the outside of the frame so that I can cut the photo. And I'm going to cut the photo using my X-Acto knife. Or my, I don't know what you call it, it's a Stampin' Up! X-Acto knife. I just need to make I just need to make a little bit of an adjustment on that on that side with Sarah. And then I'm just going to use some adhesive and do this. I'm going to make um these look like polaroids basically. I mean, it's not rocket science what's going on here. You know what I'm saying? I haven't narrated a video in a very long long time. Um so I'm way out of practice. Uh summer is a busy time for me. We do a lot of stuff with family and I'm never home. So um I had this opportunity today so I thought let me just go ahead and I have a lot of layouts made. I just haven't um this layout was made in early June. Today is July 25th. So I have a lot of layouts made. 
I just haven't had time to to do the you know the editing and the narration and things like that for to put the video up on YouTube. So it's summer, guys. You know when winter comes and we're all you know huddled in the house because it's too darn cold outside to do anything. Then I'll get back on some kind of schedule. Right now, I just um, I don't know. I haven't been in my scrapbook. I re I haven't really felt like scrapbooking lately. Um, I'm reading a lot of books and playing a lot of <laughs> online games. Although you will not get me to play Candy Crush. No, no, no. I don't need another time suck in my life. So, um, I have that fruit stamp paper from Doodlebug, and there's this, and I thought I had this crazy idea of using some textured paper on the back, and just craziness. I was going through, I have this stack of things like there, you'll see it there, I call it layering paper. Some of it is like that natural paper, some of it is tissue paper, there's some of that stampin' up, I don't know what you call that, but that's a stampin' up roll of paper. It's very crinkled. I had this idea of using like some, just to give the, the layout a little bit of texture and use some of these different types of textured papers. And I go through this whole process, pull all of these things out, and don't use a darn one of them. <laughs> Isn't that kind of the way it goes sometimes, you know? So I'm going to go through this process for no reason whatsoever. And unfortunately for you, you're going to go along for the ride. So I thought that I was going... Um, so I showed you the other side of that fruit stand paper, and it had that, like, gingham print, that uh, blue and white gingham print on it. But I um, decided that instead of that paper, I would use this uh, Dear Lizzie paper. And now I'm looking through embellishments from Crate Paper. That's Crate the Pure Ephemera Pack. And I knew I wanted to pull some gold into this layout, and I knew that the Crate Paper Collection had gold embellishments, so I, um, you know, pulled that out. I keep all of my embellishment packs that are like that in iris cases. I've been doing that for a very long time. Um, so I should do an updated scrap room tour because... I've changed a lot of things since I did that last one. Oh, I do use one piece of that paper. Um, this embossed paper. It's like that natural paper. It's from the paper studio. I got it at Hobby Lobby. And it's like this embossed. It's it's kind of uh, it's got, it got a metallic look to it. And then it's got some embossed like leaves and flowers on it. And I do use it in that. I'm going to use it in the upper right of the uh, upper left of the. I still don't know my left from my right. Um my upper left and the bottom right of this layout. So I'm, I'm trying to see how I'm going to incorporate some of these other pieces that I pulled out. That baggie that I had there, it's, um, I actually don't know where it came from. That, um, what do I have on my, uh, yellow white polka dot envelope, that thing, it's from my stash. I don't, I, um, I don't know where it came from. That's a Dear Lizzie tag. Um, and here I'm just trying to figure out, I really want to use that popsicle paper. I bought the popsicle paper specifically for this photo. So I wanted to use it, and now I can't figure out how to get it to work. So I'm going to look at it again, try to remeasure. I'm going to get it on there somehow. That's the goal. And that Dear Lizzie paper, that Fifth and Frolic paper there, it's just scraps that I had left. And I actually do have a full sheet of it, but since I had significant um, pieces of that, it's word paper, and I knew I was going to cover most of it up. I was going to cover the gap. You see, it's two pieces of paper. It's not tall enough. It's not, you know, it's not big enough for what I wanted to do with it. But I decided that I would just use the two two scraps instead of cutting the the other 12 by 12 because I knew that the photos were going to lay over that seam. So I wasn't so worried about the fact that, you know, it was two separate strips of paper. So that's that. And now I think I'm getting a good idea of how I want to do all of this stuff. And then I am going to... Um, yeah, I thought about using the back side of that popsicle paper to add another layer and then decided against it. That blue, even though it does go with that one row of popsicles that are light blue, it, the blue, you know, I'm going to cover most of those light blue popsicles up. So that blue just kind of looked a bit off. 
And then I realized that I think that the whole layout is up in that upper left-hand corner way too much. And you're going to see me. I'll bring it all down. I thought it about using this vellum and didn't use it. And you'll see, I'm going to lay this all out and then realize that I don't like it as high as it is. It's pretty high up in that upper, um, it's pretty high in that upper left-hand corner and I don't like it. So I'm going to lift the whole thing up and pull it down. There you go. That's what I was doing. My video software, there's something going on with my computer. My husband is cringing as I say that, but it's making like this weird grinding noise. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on with that. So it's going to be interesting. So um, one of those, those are from Crate, um, the two little gold pieces. One says fun in the, sun, in the sunshine and the other one says the sweetest. And that is the um, fifth and frolic die cuts and chipboards that I'm going through now. And these foxes, like one's a little girl and one's a little boy fox, they have nothing to do with the theme of this layout. But I could not envision myself using it anywhere else, and there was a boy and a girl, and I was like, you know what, they fit with the colors, and they look kind of cute, and, you know, I'm going to use them here. I don't know that they make any sense where they are, but I was like, I'm never going to use these anywhere else, so. So I added that little die cut from the Dear Lizzie collection that says Extraordinary Goodness on that tag. I thought at first I was going to use that tag for my journaling and then change my mind. And then I'm thinking I'm going to use that heart out of that natural paper, um, textured paper thing and decide I, I don't end up using it. But I do use this sticker from Jelly Bean Soup and it says a popsicle a day and it's going to form part of my title because my full title is going to be a popsicle a day makes them happy. And I'm going to use this big large sun um, that came in a chipboard set that I just have stored. You see the iris case there on the left. I just store in something that I call weather. Um, it's just things that I have and kept before I started keeping track of who made what. Um, so I don't know who made that big large sun, but, uh, and the rhinestone that was on it, I actually took it off because it was kind of green. If you look on the right side there by my paper piercer, you can see it. It was too green. It just looked weird. So I took it off because we, we always have bling in our stash. We can fix that, you know. So I'm just working on how I want these things to sit. I knew I didn't want a, um, a gap between the two photos. I wanted them to be distinct photos and with the using the London fog, I didn't want to use black. So I went with the gray, the London fog there, which is, um, I guess I should have said that a little bit earlier, but that was the reason for choosing London fog over, um, like memento black or something like that, because I didn't want it to be that stark. This is a very light layout. So, and here I'm realizing that I need that to be, um, that, that envelope to be cut down a little bit more because I want it to tuck further down. There we go. And adding more glue. Because I'm trying to just glue in the center of things now in case I want to, in case I want to, you know, add layers underneath. I'm, I'm learning you guys, you know. I've only been scrapbooking since 2008. Give me a break. <laughs> so, you know, I'm learning that. Summer allergies are continuing, so there you go. That's an update. In this little thing here is how I used to keep my breads. I still think they're salt and pepper shakers. So I'm pulling out um, decorative breads from... Um, there's some My Mind's Eye there, so there's some Basic Gray, Simple Stories. And I'm just looking at breads, and I end up using none of them. I pull them all out. And then you saw the salt shakers in the drawer with all my brads. And um, those are just brads that aren't, they're not decorative brads. They're just colored brads. And then I did pull out a little, um, a little, embell a little, what do you call those things? Like a pearl to put on that sun. And then here is a, there's a tag that says the, the wonderful days of summer that I'm actually going to bring back and use. I thought I was going to use that heart and don't. Now I'm going through the chipboard from Dear Lizzie. And like I said, there's like, I've been watching like critiques of process videos or reading like on two peas or something, the message board. What do you like? What don't you like about process videos? And, and some people are, are very against the whole going through your stash. They feel like you should have a, a set 
procedure that you're going to use and you should go from start to finish and do that. And then there's, you know, I get a lot of comments where people are like, we love that we see your you know, process as you make these decisions and things. So I'm not really sure, you know, you can't please everybody. So I'm not much of a planner. So to think about doing a layout where there's a lot of planning, that's not going to happen. I thought I was going to use that ampersand and put their names and decided against that, but I am going to use that Ellie Studio tag that says uh, the wonderful days of summer. And I thought I was going to use some, what are those things called? Flare. You know, I haven't done, like I said, I haven't done a process video in a long time. I can't even remember what things are called. These sequins came in a Studio Calico kit, and I'm going to just quote unquote randomly arrange them on the page, which means I'm going to place them exactly where I want them. And someone I watched on YouTube, they put the sequins down and then just added a dollop of glossy accents on top of them. Um, and it works really well for them. I can't get that to work for me. So now I'm going to use the, the branding strip off of a piece of paper to try to take off the excess. Maybe I just have a heavy hand and I'm using too much. I don't know, but it didn't work for me. So I'm going to go back to just putting my Tombow Mono Multi Glue down because Tombow Mono Multi Glue dries matte, so you can't see the glossiness. If you want glossy, use glossy accents. It works. But um, underneath sequins, I would prefer it to be matte. So and Then I'm going to add some more of those pearl kind of jemmy looking things. And at this point, I'm like, hmm, maybe I'm finished. Oh, no, you're not. No, I ran off to do something. I don't know where I am. I think I'm looking for letter stickers. Because I knew I wanted the title to be a popsicle a day, and I forgot about that, and then sat there and looked at it and was like, oh, you're done. And then I was like, wait a minute, you didn't finish your title? There's no journaling on this page. So I'm off looking at letter stickers, and I really need to go out and buy some more bins, because my bins are getting really tight. Um, I really need to stop buying letter stickers. <laughs> I really need to stop buying stuff all the time, you know? Like, completely need to stop buying things. Come on, Gina, come back. Okay, well, actually, I run away, and then the video stops. So, um, here's the fi here's a look at the final layout. Um, I don't know what happened there. The video just cut off. So, I added um, pieces of the manufacturing strip to the bottom right and the top left to kind of include um, to kind of continue the diagonal across the page. I finished the title with some um, smaller letter stickers and then an American Craft uh, thicker. I think it was from their Shoreline collection so that the the um, the title finishes there, a popsicle a day. I added some um, gold washi tape and some pink washi tape and I think I even added, yes, yellow, pink and gold washi tape um, above the the wonderful days of summer and below the male fox at the bottom there and I actually stitched on this layout so I stitched across that washi tape, you can't see it very well on this and I didn't do any close up photos because that's not something that I I typically do, maybe I should start doing that but I, I sewed across those two pieces of gold washi and also across the two um, what do you call those? The, the the manufacturing strip in the in the two corners. I sewed across them as well. I added some more sequins into the lower right hand corner. I added my journaling, and that was the layout. So, um, it's like I did like this is my first process video I've ever done. It kind of feels that way because it's been so long. But there it is. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'll be I'm gonna try to upload these as quickly as possible, so you might see another one today or tomorrow. And um, leave me any comments or feedback you have in the in the description. Um, you know, in the, in the comments below and I will see you guys next time. I hope you're enjoying your summer. Take care. Bye-bye.